Antonina found out that Sveta was getting married only this evening. Her daughter directly said, Mom, Max and I have filed the application, the wedding is in two months. Oh, this modern youth, they keep quiet until the last minute. What upset Antonina the most was that she had never met her future son-in-law, except through photos on the phone. In the picture, some unremarkable blonde man, small and skinny, was sitting next to Sveta. Antonina would have never thought that her tall and strong daughter, with the build of an athlete, would choose him. She had always assumed he was just a friend of Sveta's. Wait, you're marrying that Maxim, she asked, confused. Yes, why? You won't even be able to see him behind you. Look at you, you've got swimmer's shoulders. And his are like a preschooler's. This photo is misleading. Once you meet him, you'll fall in love with him yourself. The introduction took place at Maxim's parents' house. They were simple people, constantly praising their son for his achievements in programming and his good job. Antonina looked at him and her daughter and couldn't hold back her tears. What kind of couple is this, she thought. With Sveta, an athlete or a rugged biker would be more fitting, but not this pale, frail guy in glasses. He sat there silently, eating salads. As mother and daughter returned home, Antonina sighed bitterly. Well, did you like my Max? Sveta asked proudly. Like him? How could I? Antonina exclaimed in despair. He's more like soup ingredients than a man. Are you planning to carry him under your arm? He's five centimeters shorter than you, that's just not right. Everyone at the wedding will laugh. Who will laugh? Sveta stopped and looked at her mother seriously. At the wedding, it'll just be our friends, who know us, and a few relatives from both sides. It's those very relatives who will laugh. You'll be like a comedy duo, like Stepsel and Terrapunka, the bride and groom. And why do you even need such a wedding? Who's paying for the banquet? Don't count on me. Max is paying for it. Mom, we've told you already that Max earns well. How can you make good money sitting in a chair? Quite easily. You'd be surprised, and not just at the office but even from home. Uh, her mother scoffed. Nonsense. Though Antonina was happy for her daughter, they were getting their own apartment that Max's parents were currently renting out, the thought of her future son-in-law still dampened her mood. During the two months before the wedding, Antonina was restless, hoping for a miracle that the couple would break up. But Sveta radiated happiness and was already picking out her wedding dress and shoes. Mom, how do you like these shoes? Sveta asked, pulling out white flats from a box. They look like they belong to an old woman, Antonina grimaced. Brides should wear heels. At work. Her friends and colleagues eagerly waited for a wedding invitation, casually hinting, more jokingly than seriously. Oh, what wedding? Antonina would reply. Just a quiet family gathering, that's all. It was a lie to save face. The workplace was large and someone might blab about such a comedic couple, leading to gossip and ridicule. It was better to endure the day like a storm and forget it, and let the young ones build their nest and live as they wish. Five relatives from the bride's side were invited to the wedding. They tried to hold back their laughter, or at least it seemed that way to Antonina. At the table, they said there was nothing unusual about such a mismatch and that the couple looked harmonious. Are you kidding me? Antonina exclaimed. You can see how ridiculous this looks. She was especially irritated by her cousin's words. The cousin had a way of joking with a straight face, making it unclear whether she was serious or not. Antonina felt like all the guests were holding back laughter while looking at the newlyweds, though everyone around was genuinely enjoying themselves. The groom was given the floor to speak. He stood up and delivered an inspiring speech, 
starting by expressing his respect for his parents and mother-in-law. At that moment, Antonina blushed deeply. Then, he turned to the bride with declarations of love. Surprisingly, this modest groom spoke with such confidence and intelligence that, in Antonina's eyes, he gradually began to seem much more attractive. And I have decided to give my beloved Sveta a wedding gift, he said, handing her a small box. Sveta opened it and took out a set of keys. What is this? she asked. These are the keys to a gift waiting for you outside. The guests rushed out to the restaurant's porch. Oh my God! A new car was standing there. Antonina couldn't believe her eyes, and Sveta was in complete shock as well. The bride, almost crying, began dancing around the car. I need to get my driver's license right away, she exclaimed joyfully. Suddenly, Antonina thought, he's not so small and unattractive in that suit after all. In fact, he's quite handsome. And the glasses give him a serious look. The dancing began. For one of the slow songs, Maxim invited his mother-in-law to dance, offering her his hand and pulling out a chair for her. How noble! He clearly knows how to be chivalrous, Antonina thought. Please forgive me, Maxim said. I understand it may seem like I'm not the right match for your Sveta, but we truly have kindred spirits, and I love her very much. Sometimes I feel insecure about my height and slim build, but what can I do? Sveta convinced me not to worry about such little things, and I've become more confident. I never thought you weren't the right match, Antonina lied. I just sometimes wondered how you'd manage heavy housework if it's beyond your strength. I'll just earn the money and hire a professional to do the work, he replied. Three to zero, in favor of the groom. He had already charmed his mother-in-law three times, with the toast during dinner, with the gift for her daughter, and now during the dance. By the end of the wedding, Antonina was almost in love with her son-in-law. After the wedding, she proudly posted the photos on social media. Her colleagues, looking at the pictures, delicately discussed them. Don't you think my son-in-law is a bit small for Svetka? she asked. I had the same first impression, one of her colleagues said. But he has a big heart, and I'm absolutely thrilled with him.